When it came to the paint, I wanted to use the same technique that I used with Project Jaded. Pro Touring 66 Mustang Coupe, all Eastwood uh, paints and, and materials. Uh, it was a beautiful little car. I loved the car. Lots of fun doing it. Use an interesting technique. When you're doing stripes, look at this stripe, Stevo. We've got Rat Rod Matte Clear, Full Gloss, Premium Show Clear, and a very smooth transition here. So, do you sand it before you tape it? Do you tape it off and then sand it? And do you tape it off and hope the paint sticks? No. There's a very specific technique that I used for this project, and I'm going to show you exactly what to do. And we're going to try a little experiment. We're not going to paint anything, but I'm going to show you what I think is going to be a, a really interesting technique. There was, and the camera guy Steve's catching up, but he'll get there eventually. <laughs> There was a car out at SEMA. Jonathan Goolsby and Goolsby Customs built this beautiful Mustang and they did a brush stripe on it. So we're gonna try and recreate that. But here's how you can lay out some stripes. If you're doing custom stripes, like a super sport stripe on a Chevelle or a Shelby stripe on a Mustang. And this is quarter inch fine line tape. And I might be a little more careful with this if it was an actual project, but honestly, it's kind of shaping up pretty darn good. So I'm layering up three layers of my fine line tape. And you might be asking yourself, why are you using that much tape? Well, I want a quarter inch stripe in between my panels or in between my, my graphic. What's the easiest way to measure a quarter inch stripe? Well, to see use quarter inch tape. So now, my middle row, well, I'm gonna pull it from this end. My middle row was nothing more than a spacer. I've masked this off for paint. I'm gonna have graphic, shiny, graphic, shiny. So, what the Goolsby guys did is what I'm gonna do is how I prep these lines here. Uh, you don't wanna sand against your fine line because you can roll that edge back and you can jam a bunch of stuff up in it. So you wanna sand in a linear format. So I'm using a scotch Brite pad wrapped around a soft sander. This is just a gray pad. I don't need much tooth, but I need something. I need something for the paint to stick. Clear coat will stick to gray pad. And you can see I can even bear down onto that fine line tape and I can prep into those tiny, tiny crevices and get a very precise and very accurate prep down into here. I could even press on that stripe and as long as I'm sanding in a linear form, in a linear pattern, I'm not degrading my tape. Because I want to preserve the tape. I want to keep that crisp and sharp. just spending a little bit of extra time prepping this because I'm hoping that it turns out kind of cool once we show you what we've done. All right, so we're going to call that done. And I'm going to wipe off my sanding debris. So now if I'm going to apply paint, I might spend a little bit more time because I can see a little bit of shiny there. I might spend a little bit more time just really focusing in on those edges. But for the sake of the argument, for the sake of this demonstration, we're going to call this done. So now what we can do is reveal 
a very cool effect. How long did that take? It took seconds, not even minutes. It took seconds. Now, is it perfect? No. If I'd spend an hour per panel on this, what have I got? There's no tape line there, folks. There's no ridge. It's really neat. There's an interview with Jonathan Goolsby talking about this very same thing. I love the fact that he was willing to share this technique with people. This car won the Mother's Shine, not this car, the, the Goolsby Mustang won the Mother's Shine Award and got a nod from the Ford design team. Beautiful craftsmanship from those guys, as we all come to expect from the Goolsby folks. But look at that, isn't that cool? Isn't that some fun tech that you can use in your car? If you, if you want a matte finish stripe or a brushed finish stripe, that's pretty cool stuff. It's not what I did with Zed Sled. I used the Eastwood Rat Rod uh, Matte Finish Clear and got the effect that I wanted, but this gives you options. So I'm glad that kind of worked. So with black, one of the things that we really have to fight when we have a black car are swirl marks. What are swirl marks? Well, it's scratches that the buffer makes or the wash mitt makes. And, and it shows, and why does it show more in black? Well, black is not a color. Every other color has pigment in it. Every other color represents a place on the color wheel or in the spectrum of color. Roy G. Biff, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, to go violet, that is the whole spectrum of color. Black is every color. It's not a color, it's all of them, all at once. And when you put a clear coat on it, it reflects. So essentially, it's a mirror. So it reflects things way more than a regular color does. So swirl marks are gonna show more. So that's why, that's a little bit of the, of the technical side of why we see swirl marks more in black cars than we do in other cars. So how do you tell if there's swirls on your car? Can you see it out there? I doubt if you can. We're degraded through the internet. It probably just looks really shiny. Um, I can see them here in the room. I've buffed this car, I've sanded this car but um, you can't really see the holograms and the halos until you do this. Now, you probably still can't see it, but I, I'm, I'm looking at, and it just pops out. When you get the flashlight right on it, all you see is the reflection of the flashlight. But you get about three feet off of that panel, and man alive, the holograms and the swirl marks come alive. It's unbelievable, and I can now see where I need to continue buffing and perfecting that surface. Step one in getting rid of swirl marks, it's cleaning the dust off the panel. I'm using an aerosol glass cleaner and a clean microfiber. And now I've cleaned the debris off of there. Typically we stay to about an hour with these live workshops. We've had a couple of technical glitches um, and we're gonna, we might go a little bit longer. Hope that's okay with you guys. I'm just gonna keep on blabbing. Now, talking about sanding and buffing. To cut and rub this car, uh, I started with 1,000 grit, went to 1,500 grit, 2,000, 2,500, 3,000, 5,000, and then I polished. Uh, I used the liquid ice system to polish, which is a single compound with three different pads. I've got it laid out here. The liquid ice is a very sophisticated rubbing compound and it works with three pads. Starts with wool, you go to the blue pad, and then finish off with the white pad, which is very fine. It almost feels like silk. Um, wool is very aggressive and it's a necessary step for the liquid ice three-step system. But that way it allows you to keep one compound and three pads and get a very nice job. What does that mean for us and Zed Sled? Well, we left some swirl marks behind. So there's a couple of different ways to go about it. By now the paint is fully cured and we can uh, We can safely go on it with wax. We could fill in the holograms with wax, but we're not removing them. So we want to remove these scratches, and I want to show you how. Incidentally, there's a Paintucation DVD called Color Sanding and Buffing. I've got my Paintucation DVDs on the Eastwood catalog. We've got Body Shop Basics, Fiberglass Repair, Paint Your Own Car, Body Panel Replacement, um, Color Sanding and Buffing, and Paint Your Own Car. Well. I'm forgetting one, Steve. What am I forgetting? Anyway, there's six of them. They're all good. Color sanding and buffing talks about some of these issues. So what we're going to do, and again, 
Yes. Swirl marks are from the buffer. The buffer is a rotary instrument. It's a rotary tool that polishes in one direction. It just goes around in a circle. So I could see the circle marks here. So you, it's hard to pull swirl marks out of the same machine to put them in there in the first place. So that's where this guy comes in. This is the Griot's Garage Orbital Buffer. This guy doesn't spin around. It orbits. You can see I can even I can even hold it still. So step one in removing swirl marks is don't use the same machine to put them in there in the first place. This guy orbits, and we can um, we can use a different pattern and pull those marks out of there. So the first step we've got the Griot's red pad. I've got my liquid ice, and I'm just going to do a small section, and I should have. Oh, there we go. I should have safety glasses on and an apron, but we're just doing a real small section. Why would I have safety glasses on? Because rubbing compound hurts when it gets in your eyes. Now that I've cleaned my panel, I'm make sure I don't sling because I've got my window open. I'm using a low speed and just making a pattern. Using a clean microfiber, I'm going to check and see what I've got. And I'm not sure if you can see it, but now it's like I've bored a hole into the middle of this panel. There's no swirls here. I can see swirls around the edge, and it's working. So, dual action orbital sander. If I'm detailing this car for a show, I'm going to go through this step on every panel probably two or three times. For you guys in the live stream, I'm just going to go once and I'm going to move on to the next step, which is waxing. So the Grio sand or polisher that I've got comes with three different pads. The polishing pad it was the red one. The waxing pad is this black one. And I'm going to use a high quality Carnuba wax. which does a couple of things. It really brings out the luster in a panel, but it also fills in some minor imperfections. And I'm not bearing into the panel at all. I'm just using just a little bit of pressure. I'm letting the machine do the work and the wax and the product itself do the work. And again, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just giving you the quick and dirty on it. So now with the Carnuba wax and a clean microfiber, right in here especially, and I'm going to get my light and I'm going to show myself that I've done the job. What did I do with my flashlight, Steve-O? Here it is. And they're shockproof too. I'm not seeing the holograms and halos that I was seeing before. So, two steps after the paint's cured, or even using body shop safe stuff with, with a fresh paint job, you can get rid of swirls on a, on, on a black vehicle. Use the dual action buffer, don't use the rotary buffer. The Griot's Garage tool is available on the Eastwood Company. It's a really nice piece of gear. So, um, the other thing that we promised you that we were going to address is chip repair. There's a, a rock chip right here on the door. And someone that's standing in this room knows how it got there. <laughs> Focus, well, first of all, look at this panel gap. I'm so proud of this panel gap. This is a, a, a uh, 
It's a 3 16 panel gap from here to here. If you've seen these cars new or unrestored, that didn't happen with the factory. That 3 16 gap that's even all the way down, I'm proud of that gap. Uh, episode 7, Hands on Cars, I show you how to create those panel gaps by welding the edge of the door, machining it down, using the proper filler to fine tune that edge, which is a fiberglass short strand filler that is very, very strong. So you're not building it up with mud, you're not building it up with fillers, you're building it up with welding and refining that weld with fillers like we did the rest of the car. That panel gap is something to be proud of and I'm proud of that. It looks really nice and it works well with this car. So now we've chipped the paint. We didn't chip the filler back because there is none there, it's just paint. So now we've got, can you focus in on that Steve and show? We've got some pretty aggressive priming and blocking sessions here too, so you can feel it with your hand. Can you see that? Okay, he can see it. All right, so that's a nasty booger right there. So what do you do? Do you sand it down to paint the door? Well, no, I wanna drive. I wanna go driving on this car. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to get an effective base coat, clear coat chip repair here. And we're gonna start with the same base color that I've got on the rest of the car. It's Eastwood's Boulevard Black base color. Incidentally, these little touch-up guys are, they're on the website as well. All I'm, just like base coating your car, the only function of color is color. You're not trying to build up, I'm not trying to build up the scratch. I'm trying to hide the fact that I can see that gray contour poly surface or underneath there. I'm done. There's my color. I'm done. So now what do we do? Here's what you do. We're gonna be using the Eastwood Euro Clear. It's a two to one mix, which tells me that the clear is pretty thick. We could use the four to one clear. We could use any clear. The, the point that I wanna make is that you, you have to respect the mix ratio. If you've got a four to one clear, respect the mix ratio. Don't dump and mix and hope. Don't use clear coat without a catalyst in it. It's not gonna cross link and it's gonna be bubble gum and draw dust in and all kinds of stuff. You're not gonna get a good repair. Here's how to get a good effective repair and mimic the steps in a base coat clear coat job without the spray guns coming out. And would this be a perfect repair? Well, there's a chance that it could be. Honestly, there is a chance that we could get a perfect repair. But it's probably gonna be temporary and it's probably gonna be enough to where nobody really notices it and uh, I don't have anybody saying, how do you get that chip on the side of your door? So, we're gonna use a little bit of, well, Okay, so we're gonna use a little bit of clear, a little bit more clear <laughs> in this stainless steel guy. And I'm using gloves because you always wanna be safety aware with these chemicals. They're hazardous and toxic and you don't wanna introduce them into your body. Skin absorption is one way they can be introduced into your body. So, we've got clear and we've got catalyst. Two to one ratio. Two parts clear, one part catalyst. How do we arrive there? Here's how. Eyedroppers are cheap. Hobby Lobby, Dollar Store, CVS. So, two to one, I'm gonna need more than two drops. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna double that, which is four to two. Does that make sense? One, two, three, four drops. Now I'm done with the clear. Four to two ratio, break it in half is two to one, just like fractions work. So now I need two drops of my catalyst. One, two, bam! I have a perfect mix ratio. It's like James Bond, shaken and stirred. So now what do I, it's not fingernail polish, it's not super glue, it's not lacquer clear, it's not uh, anything other than what is actually on the car, a catalyzed clear coat with the perfect mix ratio that I can dole out with a tiny little device like this. So now we're gonna go over to the door. And now I'm applying my clear one coat at a time, just like when you paint, 
one coat at a time on this type of repair and leave it alone. Don't mess with it. Don't, don't even look at it. Just like on Spinal Tap, don't look at that guitar. So now we wait because it's going to need, just like your top coats, it's going to probably need about three coats. 15 minutes, you can put another coat on. So during this 15 minutes, <laughs> we won't be there 15 minutes, I'll give you another coat. But I wanted to show you some other stuff. This is, uh, I want to show you the in interior of Zed Sled. I'll give Steve a chance to look around and I'm going to go to the other side of the car. If you take a look, and Steve, close up to the dash and the steering wheel. I can't see on your monitor. Can you see all this stuff, all this detail in here? Yeah. And how nice this dash looks? Well, the dash pad is a brand new one from NPD, but all this plastic is the original plastic. And guess what? If you watch episode one, you're going to realize it was red. Now it's black. The steering wheel is black. It's not coming off. The plastic looks brand new and it is because we have Eastwood's plastic resurfacer on it. It's not paint, it actually bonds with the plastic and, uh, and creates a finish that becomes part of the plastic. Uh, it's a beautiful solution to reviving an interior. Uh, and I've got a lot of pieces of this car done in the plastic resurfacer system. I've used it, I've talked about it. Uh, it is absolutely bulletproof. I've had this dash plate in and out probably six times, at least six times, putting the Dakota Digital gauges in. The steering wheel, I've driven, you know, 50, 60 miles in this car. The steering wheel is, is um, well, you know, it, it gets the most use out of anything. Dirty, clammy hands. If it was paint, I would be able to pull it off. It ain't paint, folks, and it's on there, and it looks great, and it has saved me from having to buy a, uh, a steering wheel. It's saved me from having to, to, um, source out a different color dash and it's a problem that has been solved thanks to again an Eastwood product that didn't cost very much money but uh, provided a solution to the problem. Um, this car has got a 4L80E transmission that we got from Moltz used auto parts. Um, it's got a TCI torque converter, a billet torque converter, a flywheel and an outlaw shifter and we're good to go. We've got a nice shift pattern in this car. Uh, the seats are from TMI products. And they're very comfortable. And they've slipped right over the foam. And it's just a really nice interior. It's a little over the top. It might be just a little in your face, but you know, it's Zed Sled. Look at the graphics down the side of the silly car. It's a little, a little in your face. So now I'm going to put another coat on here because I feel deep down in my bones of hearts and bones and hearts that we're ready for another coat. But I want to show you the engine. And we're probably not far from saying good night but I want to show you this engine because there's a couple of different things at play here I may not be in this shot because we got to put a light on it and I want you guys to see it well actually I can swing around the other way so Holly performance products has these pieces to do an LS swap we're using a Holly engine mounts Holly transmission cross member it's a Holly accessory drive it's not billet it's not shiny it's not polished it's just functional. So it's affordable in the sense that, yeah, we gotta have it. You gotta move the alternator on an F body when you do an LS swap. You gotta move it up because typically on the trucks, which is this is a truck engine, typically on the trucks, they're down and out. So you gotta change stuff around. The HVAC, the a AC compressor pump is also down and low. We don't have room. Otherwise the engine would be sitting up here. We wouldn't be able to close a hood. The mid-ram intake manifold, it's the three-piece manifold, it's the one, don't tell Holly, it's the one that I dropped and fixed. Um, we've got Clayton Machine Works uh, covers hiding the ugly LS uh, coil packs, and everything else is Eastwood. This coating here is freaking bulletproof, man. This is Eastwood's uh, metal blackening system, and uh, it's the same coating that's on the wheels. It's very, very strong, and it looks like powder coat, but I didn't have to powder coat this stuff. It's actually a paint application. It's a sprayed application that you go on here. What else is Eastwood? Oh, paint here. This is the, the Rat Rod Black uh, Matte Clear 
Um, the inner fenders, the subframe, the subframe connectors, all of these are uh, coated in Eastwood um, Boulevard Black and Matte Clear. Here's the thing that I'm going to finish off with. You can't see all of it. You can see the top of it. We've got electric fan and the Eastwood Tri-Flow Radiator. Uh, driving this car around, yeah, it's a little bit cooler this time of year, but driving this car around, I have to wait probably 30 or 40 minutes before this thing gets up to about 185 degrees. This radiator works. It works extremely well. It's a tri-flow radiator. Eastwood advertises a 25 degree loss between inlet and outlet temperatures, and let's face it, there's a lot of, there's a lot of meat stuffed under this engine compartment. It's going to get heated up especially with aggressive driving, it's going to get heated up. You want that charge to be cool by the time it goes back into the water pump and into the internal engine passages, and the Eastwood Tri-Flow radiator absolutely does the job. It's a generic radiator. It's not made to fit any specific car, but there's three different sizes for GM, all with the LS steam port, and there's also now Ford and Chrysler Tri-Flow radiators that are available. Um, and it works, man. It, it just works. So, Z sled. Oh, one more thing. We're trying to make it better than before. So, these down bars here are from Pro Touring F Body. Uh, Dave Speedbird is the guy that came up with these. These are chassis braces that brace to the upper control arm mount. I've got corner braces here from Detroit Speed, but these chassis braces here really add to the rigidity of this car. We're after making this thing handle a lot better. We've got a much bigger sway bar. This goes a long ways towards stabilizing the front end of this car. And the roll bar, if you notice the roll bar on the inside, that's also Pro Touring F body. And it does its job. The last thing I want to talk about is a question that, that cuz I've posted stuff on, on if you're friends with me on Facebook or if you watch if you follow the feed or anything like that um, we've we've shown a little bit about these side vents and I've shown you pretty much exactly how to do these. Um, a good friend of mine Chris Lee helped with the, the mounting solution but I I wanted these uh, extractor vents in here because they're functional. It pulls heat out of the engine bay. These cars weren't just the disco cars that were all fluff. There was actually some function in the, in the design. But the problem was that this vent sticks on the outside and it's raised up. If you go to, go to episode two of Hands On Cars, and I showed the difference, I showed the bicarbonate of soda blasting this particular vent and showing how it really leaves a nice clean surface. And it shows you exactly how the original vents are, are placed on this car. Do a 78 Camaro, 78, 79, 80, and 81. 78 and 79 had these gill style vents. So just do a Google search on images and you'll see where these, uh, these extractor vents, where they were mounted originally. Same place. So I was thinking, and I, I had a good friend here that uh, I respect very much. He's an excellent metal shaper. And I said, I asked him, I said, what, what would you do? I said, I want it to look like the, the older Ferrari GT. Uh, cars with the side gills or the early Cobras with a 427 and and he said well we can draw you up some plans and we can make it out of aluminum or something like let me work on it and when he left it kind of inspired me to start uh, thinking about it and I pulled the vent off of the car and for some reason I put it back in the back side and Steve if you get close here what you're gonna see is this edge here and what happened is that it showed itself to me exactly what to do here it's not a big thing but look what it does to the side of the car. Now, from the factory, there's a hole here, 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 and here to hold this sucker on because there's a stud in the part. So I smacked it in from the backside and went, oh my gosh, look at that. That's going to be so fun. It sleeks up the side of the car, filled the holes. Uh, Chris Lee came up with a latch mechanism. We've got a bar of eighth inch stock here, a bar of eighth inch stock here on the backside, a stud welded to that, and a swing latch. So these are removable. We painted them separately. If you uh, look in the paint, uh, the paint job show, we show you exactly how we did it. But it really, really cleans up the side of the car, and um, it's a it's simple. It goes right along with the theme of this car: affordable pro touring. This, from a, a custom shop, would be very expensive and very time consuming. This took a couple of hours to do. Yeah, I sanded them. I refined the edge a little bit. But what a neat custom trick. I, I, it was cool that I stumbled across it. Um, I think other guys have probably done it. I certainly don't claim to be the, the first person to invent that wheel. But I'm so proud of the way it really cleaned up the side of this car. So what's next? 
for Project Z sled. We are going to see how much power it makes. And I don't care how much power it makes. It's a, uh, it's a used 6-liter iron block engine out of a 2013 GMC pickup truck. John Bouchard, uh, John Bouchard Racing Engines spec'd out a camshaft. Uh, we went boost friendly. Hmm? You know what that means for down the road. Um, and, and as aggressive as we could with, uh, with still being able to add forced induction to this car. So I don't know what these engines make, uh, somewhere around 450 horsepower from the factory. So I'm guessing it's going to be a little bit better than that. By the time it goes through the 4L80 transmission, back to the axles and all that kind of stuff, we don't know. They're kind of heavy wheels. They're billet specialties wheels. They're just a cast aluminum wheel. I got them off eBay and uh, they're kind of heavy. <laughs> so whatever it makes is going to be whatever it makes. Is it going to be better than it was? You bet. Is it going to be uh, a car that's going to set the world on fire? Well, probably not. It's probably, it's certainly not the only F-body Camaro that's been fixed up. But it's our car, and it's affordable pro touring, and it's documented pretty much from start to finish on, on hands-on cars. So um, thank you for following along with this car. We've had a ton of questions uh, both online and uh, as well as at the end of the YouTube videos. And we've, we've tried to tell people exactly what it was that we did with the car. Uh, LS Fest was a huge success. We had a lot of people asking about it. And next year at LS Fest, we're going to be beating the heck out of this car. And we're going to see some track time here pretty soon, and we're going to show you all of it. So I want to say thanks for, for tuning into this. Uh, sorry for the glitches. It's the internet. It's live. My little bird nest accident with the MiG-175. Oops. <laughs> sorry. We got to show you how quick it was to... Uh, switch from carbon steel to aluminum welding, and, um, and that's the beauty of Eastwood tools and equipment. They're affordable, they do the job right, and you can too. So thanks for watching this. Uh, watch this later, click on the tools, go to the Eastwood website. There's all kinds of crazy sales between now and Christmas, and um, I hope you have a, a great holiday, and thank you so much for being a part of what we do, and um, we'll see you on the flip side. We've got more hands-on cars to show you, we've got more live streams to show you, so keep on tuning in. We'll keep on showing you what we know. Thanks. I'm Kevin Tates. We'll see you next time.